a full-on IT coder, adding those special backgrounds on Black Planet and the music. You know when you could do all of that on Black Planet, you thought that you were just <laughs> MySpace. Yeah, we did. All, I, I, I went crazy on MySpace with all the backgrounds. Music. Standing up late at night, letting the yeah, stuff yeah. fall from the screen. Yeah, yeah let me. <laughs> yeah. Black, Black Planet was the introduction. MySpace was like the, mm -hmm. the true introduction to Absolutely. social media. Man, don't sleep on Black Planet, bro. Black Planet, when you were able to add that background music, though. Yeah. I'm going to take it back for your high five. What's high five? Yeah, high five was before all of them. I'm too old. Yeah. I don't remember that. High five? High five, yeah. That. It was back in 2004. I remember I signed up for in college. That was started high. Wow. Oh yeah. no, man! Black Planet was way before. Huh? Yeah, Black Planet before, but I mean, like on a social oh. structure. Yeah, so See, that's movie. why I love yeah, this show. We we learn something new every day. Yeah, <laughs> love, love, love on Facebook. We like absolutely. All right, so we just talking and tossing back and forth about our memories of social media, how far we've come. Jomo reminded us of a high five that some of us ain't heard of. We talking about MySpace. We talking about Black Planet. But you know, we're gonna bring it current to the to the Twitters, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, um, the the Pinterest. I mean, there's so many different platforms. We're gonna talk about it. But first and foremost, welcome back um, to the squad. And you might see a foreign but not so foreign face. We got a cousin with us today. If y'all could give a warm welcome to Charles. Hey Charles, <laughs> welcome back. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me again, man. Appreciate the invite again. I'm just glad to be back a part of it, man. This is awesome. I like it. Nice. We're glad to have you. We can't miss you with the yellow that you have on. So No cap. No cap. That's dope. <laughs> Love it. All right, Chris, how you doing? I like to stay humble. I'm good. Yeah. I'm, good. I'm blessed. You look like but... Bless on the Sunday here, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that's right. Joe, I like the representation we've got going on. Dual. Yes, of course, yes. had their emancipation yesterday. Big ups mm -hmm. to that. But you also have an adult sweatshirt. What does that say exactly? Be a good person. Hey, okay. Free promo. Yes. Free promo. I'm with that. I like it. Mark, how you doing What's today? Up? I am, as, as they say, blessed, giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, seeing another day, seeing my people, getting ready to have some great discussion and just uh, being alive on Sunday. Yeah. 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 I feel you. I feel a smidget more blessed today. I don't know if it's because it's August, and you know, August is that month. Um, you know, 828 means a lot of things, but the number eight stands for renewal, stands for rejuvenation, it stands for new beginnings, and I feel that this month. I'm excited for it. Um, so yeah, mentor, talk to me about how you're feeling. I'm feeling great. I got my water here for the there people is. who, you know, I love how the community got behind me to make sure I stay hydrated. Um, it's good to see everybody. Good to see everyone on the panel looking good, feeling good, that melanin popping. Mm -hmm. The show is getting ready to be popping. I just love y'all, man. I just want to be um, some positive energy amongst all of the rest of the good energy. You dig? Agreed. And I appreciate that because there's so much going on right now that could put us in a different mentality and have a different way of thinking and feeling right now. So. I'm glad to hear that our five brothers today are feeling hopeful, are in good spirits, and most of all, are healthy and staying hydrated. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dive in. we got a jam-packed session today. As you know, this session, the That's What He Said, this is a gentleman forum that is dedicated to uncovering the thoughts of our wonderful, amazing Black men through transparency and vulnerability. And tonight's topic is a much needed one around the impact of social media on relationships and mental health. So I'm very much prepared for this to go to a part two because there's just so much to be talked about. And even as I was framing up this conversation, there was so many questions and of course not enough time. So I wanna prepare 
everyone just in case we got to go to a part two. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But we can't do anything without greeting the folks in the chat. So, of course, we want to take a moment and just big up the folks that are tuning in. Um, Joe, are you on live? Do you see anybody tuning in that you want to shout out real quick for joining us early? Uh, no, no special person. Of course, you know, Andy, Aisha, Shelly, they uh every week. Okay, the crew. The crew, then. Um, the the crew. crew. Um, I do see some new names on there um, that just uh, joined in. I see Alex Desdunes. Um, what? One time for the Zoe team. That's so mean. Uh, so, so um, nah, man, I, I love it. All right, cool. So, big yeah, up man, to the I look folks forward to this chat. every Sunday. Yeah, man. So, welcome to the party, the newcomers for our for our home team. Welcome back, guys. We thank you for joining and love your support as always. La, 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 la. I can keep going and going. Let's jump into the questions. So, first question for you all. Let's say that someone just landed on planet Earth, right? They've never been here before. How would you explain social media to them? And what would be your advice to them on using social media? So I'm going to jump to Mentor first, because he like he's about to jump through the screen at me. Mentor, go ahead. <laughs> Well, I would tell them to uh, take off their shoes, walk on the grass, feel that, feel how real it is. Um, talk and speak to people in person. You know, find out if they have stank breath. You know, things that you can't find out through a screen. Um, I would definitely allow them, tell them to get in contact with anything that's real and right there in your face as much as possible mm. before I introduce them to anything on social media because social media is, a, is too much smoke and mirrors. Mm. And they would definitely get a uh, misinterpretation of planet Earth if all they learn it from is from social media. Mm. So yeah, that's my answer and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> okay, all right, tag who's next, who's going next? I jump on. I, 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 it was. A, I was trying to think of this talk show way back, maybe back in the early '80s. The guy with the big mouth. Uh, called Arsenio Morpo, Morpo. Way before Morpo. What was his name? Arsenio. Not Arsenio. The talk show where they just did a scandalous stuff. Uh, they, you know, would get into fights. Uh, but I can't think of his name. But he had the big mouth. But mm -hmm. I would advise them. To look at several talk shows, that would be one of them, Maury Povich, um, Jerry Springer. And I'll tell them to just <clears throat> look at a couple episodes of that, and now just be when you get on the social media, just take that format and put it on social media, where people just say whatever they want to say, whatever's on their mind, they're going to say it, and they're doing it for likes and for applause and for attention. So that's my thought of social media. I don't mm. take anything off social media with any amount of facts or uh, uh, truth. I think it's all there just for somebody to get a like, or I want you to, to uh, acknowledge me. I want to be acknowledged. I want to be seen right now. Mm. So yeah, that would be my advice. And I'm looking at several episodes of those old crazy talk shows. Okay. And just say, this is the digital version of it. This is the digital, this, yep. This is the digital version of these talk shows. Okay. All right, um, Charles. Man, I tell him it's a gift and a curse. First and foremost, it's a gift and a curse. It was created as a platform for us to be able to connect with our family and friends. But as we know with time, it has turned into something totally different. So any advice I can give them is be mindful. You know, stepping into it, be mindful that uh, even though it has a lot of good to it, it has a lot of negative as well, you know, it has the ability to allow you to stay connected, see friends, family members you haven't seen for years. You know, you can also uh, make it a business. You can capitalize off of it and monetize off of it. A lot of people have it found a way where they can, you know, uh, sell whatever it is they're selling. But then on the other hand, it's a distraction. You know, you got to mm. be mindful of that too. It can distract you. I mean, I've, I've seen people wake up first thing in the morning 
and before, jump on social media. Listen, before they say a prayer or brush their teeth, Anything. they are on. I'm telling you. And then let's stop talking the about the president now. Let's stop. And, <laughs> and on the flip side, two, three in the morning, you have people that's like, who's up? And you'll see people that are actually ex- responding. So it could definitely be a distraction. So just be mindful and proceed with caution. Excellent. All right, Joe. Joe seems to be a minimalist when it comes to social media. <laughs> so I'm curious to know him and Chris's thoughts. Joe, don't believe the hype. Mm-hmm. Don't believe the hype. But it's, it's, it's the biggest. It's the biggest show. You know, for people that don't got cable, don't got the Fire State, don't got Roku, or can't subscribe to Netflix, log on to social media. You'll get a show. Uh, there's people on there that put on this facade because they want to be. Uh, I'm just gonna be. I mean, I don't. I don't want to disrespect anybody, but they ain't. They 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 really ain't shit in their own in their own circle or their own house. But they go on social media and they put on the front. People mm. um hide hide true feelings um on social media like you be going through some real stuff, but because it's social media, you don't want them to see that side. So I just say just don't believe the hype. Um, sit back and watch the show. Don't get too caught up into it. Mm. But yes. I'll say if you use it for your right platform, like this show, okay. or other things like selling your business, those things can be the perfect thing. But some people they just use it to, to become someone that they're not in their own in their own circle. Mm. That's good. But, All right, Chris. Well, I definitely agree. Um with what Joe just said. And definitely what Charles said, because you have the advantages and you have the disadvantages. That's how to explain to the alien. And um, Mark, yeah, that's true. That's a good analogy to look at a, a talk show. Uh, mentor, feel the grass, just don't smoke the grass. That's what I would tell you. <laughs> that's what I would tell the alien. But just to, just to, to make it short, I would just say pretty much um, like Shakespeare said, um, the whole world is a stage. So when, when you look at social media, most of the people are acting. I would say probably about in a 90 percentile, you know, somewhere in that range, because you know you have the people that's too transparent, all right? They get up and they tell you, and they tell you all the business, <clears throat> everything that's going on, right? Mm-hmm. But for the most part, <clears throat> most people are acting. And then I would say <clears throat> my advice would be, do it for the love, don't do it for the likes. Facts. Right. Facts. Like that. I like Listen, that. I that's it's not gonna, mine. That's chronics. That's chronics. Yeah. I was checking because I was like, do we need another <laughs> slogan for the show? Like, I about. Okay, so great points. Um, so for those of you that just tuned in, the first question was someone just landed on planet Earth. How would you explain social media? And what would be your advice to them? So some really great sound advice from the group. It could be a gift and a curse. Um, don't believe everything you see. Don't believe the hype. Um, a lot of it is fronting uh, for the likes and the numbers and the followers, you know. So it does have um, some, some very damaging instances in the event, you know, you're into being validated. It can really... Mm-hmm. get to an individual. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. So if you could change anything about social media or maybe invent something with social media, like what would that be? So let me let me go back. I, I, listen, listen, I have a pet peeve. Let me just go first on that one. <laughs> okay. All right, because <laughs> rule. This I would have to have some rule, man. Um, please, you're taking a, you know, you, please clean your bathroom mirror, <laughs> all right? And please clean up your room, clean up the background, you know, before you take your selfie, all right? That's what I would change. That's a rule. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I could always count on you for those, you know, impactful yet, you know, easy fixes to things, yeah. <laughs> I All see. right, let me go. Joe, what would be, what's a pet peeve or what's something that you wish you could incorporate with social media? Man, it's a lot of it, uh, but the biggest one is when people put up these nasty, 
food plates. It's like, up, like, what are you thinking? Like, there's nothing good about that. Who's eating it? All right, so we need like some people in the background, like chefs or something, oh, that can just verify and just tell them, like, hell no, go back to the kitchen and try again. Like, they put up plates, and it's like, like you don't even eat that. Like, why? Why would you put that? And I think that's 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 the worst. You know, taking the like you said, people people don't say don't bless their food no more. Like you go into a restaurant, you literally see people sit down, they get their plate, the first thing they do is take yeah. the plate, and I think, and, and and it bothers me because I'm someone that still says a prayer before I eat. Um, and it's just like, man, you guys don't understand that you guys, you guys are missing something. Mm. All right, thank you, Joe. We have mm -hmm. Yardi, who was also on our panel last week. She threw in the chat, I would have a time limit on social media use. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm sure we all know someone or even right. ourselves where we would want to. <laughs> you have exceeded the amount of time that you can use social media for today. <laughs> Y'all just came through with a good one. Right, exactly, like right? I totally agree, I totally mm -hmm. agree. I wish that they had like a front end thermometer like uh, if there was some type of like, <laughs> like, like fat look, look, checker, can, <laughs> yeah. Can, can I go next? I would love to go next. <laughs> go ahead, go on tour. Yeah, okay. some people need that. Though. Cap is all cap. <laughs> you got your like button, right? You got your love button. You got your care button. You got my favorite, the ha 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 button, right? <laughs> you got the wild button. You got the angry button, right? So that's a nice little coll uh, collection. However, you know what I want to see? It's I want to see them announce when somebody unfriends me. I want to see the name. <laughs> you ask me what would I change? Yeah, I'm maxed out at 5,000 friends, right? Maxed out. So I'll make a controversial post. There it goes to 4,997 real quick. Like three people to believe me, right? <laughs> I just want to know the names. Of the, I just want to know. I don't you care. Just, I just want. You just, just curious. <laughs> I'm just curious, right? right. Just the more, nobody has the time to go back and look through all of your friends and check to see who's there. Who, Definitely nobody not. Nobody has that thousand. kind of time. No, right. nobody has that kind of time. So you know, I would love for Facebook to you know they tell you everything else. They're telling everyone where your location is. You know, if you get close to a person in the state, you know, they'll tell me, oh, such and such from this state is close to you. What? That's you know? nerve-wracking. <laughs> right. So if Facebook can do all of that, just announce to me who who, who unfriended me. Mm. And, 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 know. And, and you know what, too? <laughs> and see who is lurking. Hey. <laughs> That you can find that out. That one. That one. They have, a, they yeah. have an app for that. They have an app, so you get they have it? app for yours, what? too, Mentor. I think hey. they have a map, uh, app for seeing who unfriends you. But you're saying an app for who's lurking? Yeah. Hey, Chris, so did the app tell you you got a friend right outside your apartment door? <laughs> <laughs> right outside the window? <laughs> I right. need that. <laughs> Your stalker is within 20 feet. Of <laughs> yeah. Northwest. Position. You'll be surprised. You know? That's crazy. You'll be surprised. People lying. You know? yeah. <laughs> oh, Can I didn't go? see that. <laughs> no, they right. see right. it. You call it Chris for WhatsApp. You call it Blue Ticky. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, don't Blue Ticky me. So, don't Mark. Blue ticky me. Yeah. I'll have you go and then Charles. So if there's, what pet peeve do you have with, with social media? Or if you could change anything with social media, what would it be? I, I think my pet peeve and the thing I would change is the same as what you said, Alicia. If it was something on there that would indicate when somebody's fronting or when you just making up stuff, just saying stuff, that there would be a red dot just come on the screen and just start flashing. Yeah. Uh, just something. <laughs> Maybe like a, like a fact checker. Yeah, oh, no. exactly. We should exactly. bring back the Sandman. Like, how dope would that be? Yeah. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah. Comes out yeah. And he just takes you off the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, black, yeah like a, a, gotta be a black Sandman now. Be <laughs> yeah, but more yeah. like a fat checker, Chris. Something that when you yeah. say, you know, blah, 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 it just mm -hmm. appears right across your, your Twitter or whatever the case, mm -hmm. right along with your statement or with your uh, photo. Disclaimer <laughs> not true. This is the actual blah, blah, blah. Yeah. 
Yeah. That would be that's, a, that would be the thing I would change. change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that would help bring the economy job back of no jobs. If that was literally somebody's profession to have to mm -hmm. <laughs> gauge the what, accuracy yeah. and truth. You know, it definitely made people, you definitely couldn't jump on here and just start blurting that stuff if you know you're getting ready to get called out. Yeah, for sure. Before I jump to Charles, you bring up a good point with that, uh, Mark, because we've become just way too impulsive. Impulsive on what we think, say, post. Like, I don't think people are thinking about tomorrow when they're posting things. They're just in the moment, pressing send, recording, like not to turn the mood somber, but my first killing that I saw was on social media. Like that should not be the case. Like people aren't gauging to say, right point. you know, is this something that the masses should see? You know, like there's no respect or boundaries anymore. Anything is fair game. And yeah, it's a scary place to visit social media. Um, Charles, what are your thoughts? But first, I want to say, man, a lot of great insight, man, from everybody. I think we might need to set a meeting up with, like, Facebook or somebody and try to see if we can get some of this stuff implemented, man. We might have some business ventures we got to talk about. <laughs> I'm, liking, <laughs> I'm liking it. <laughs> uh, but I guess something that I would want to change, um, I would probably say I would remove DMs. I would remove any type of direct message, instant message from all social media, because I just feel like it brings more harm than help. Uh, I see a lot of disrespect that comes through these direct messages. Everybody's on the DMs now, right? But a lot of people talk more with their fingers than actually in person. So they're not going to say a lot of these things they say through DMs that they might say if there was in front of the person. So I would probably remove all direct messages. And guess what? If you want to contact or you want to say something about somebody, say it in the comments for everybody to see. Or why don't you call them on the phone? Why don't you text them? If you don't want everybody to have your number, create a business card. Have them call you. Have them text you. So guess what? That takes away from now all these dudes sending your girls these eggplant emojis. They don't even know her. They mm. don't know you. That takes away from you receiving all these DMs from people you might not know. But now your, your significant other or somebody is asking, who was this DME? I don't know these people. Mm -hmm. But I, you run into a lot of these issues and it creates confusion in the household sometimes. So for me, <clears throat> if there's no DMs, you got to be direct with it, man. Let's get back yeah, to that the, place where we communicate the, more. The DMs relationship wise is very like behind the curtain, right? Like a lot could go on back there that may not yeah. be appropriate. Um, but I will say DMs for networking and like business aspects. I think Aisha mentioned the same thing. As far as DMing for like business inquiries, that's that's almost some that is pretty much needed because as they're promoting on Instagram or Facebook, you want to be able to reach them and you may not have their contact info outside of DM. So I could see to your original point how that one feature can hurt and help businesses, households, relationships, mental health. It's crazy how one function can play so many different roles. Absolutely, it's crazy. All right, anybody else want to add to that? All right, it's getting good. In the chat. What we got, Joe? I just want to say, I think, I think social media is. Um, I think, I think people that that let social media come into their relationship. I think, I think that's a that's a, a disservice to the to the to the other person. Uh, I notice a lot that a lot of people want to want to be like this person on social media. Why are we not doing this? Why are we not doing that without mm -hmm. really going on in those people live? And I think that those are why a lot of relationships aren't working now. Um, you know, everybody wants to do this. And even on uh, let's let's go to our platform where we're speaking about, you know, black rights and those things. I think a lot of people were just piggybacking off of what they saw on social media, because if you notice, a lot of it died down and we're still. We're still going through the same fight. It's like three shows ago, we we're talking about, you know, is this something that we need to continue? And it's and a lot of people aren't continuing it because they're seeing other things going on. You know, the beach is open back up, so I'm gonna go rent a yacht and I'm gonna go back on the yacht. We're still trying to we're still trying to convict Breonna Taylor's killers, and we're not even seeing that anymore on social media. So I think a lot of people use it in the wrong platform, and a lot of a lot of our brothers and sisters need to start uh, waking up and use the platform in a better way. Mm. 
Mm. Versus just being the next hot thing or hot Mm. moment or showing off Mm. what you just Mm. bought or showing off where you're going or where you're at. There's a lot of that. Yeah. Agreed. Mm. All right. So let's just jump into the next one. How do you protect your peace while engaging on social media? That's part one. And then the next part is how do you decompress from social media? So let me let me start with uh, Jomo first on that. Um, what are, the first one, decompress. Sometimes it's not just social media. Sometimes you got to put your phone down. Not just social media. You put your phone down. Get off your phone. Go in the real world. Uh, go outside. You know, you know, do things where it doesn't pertain to you picking up your phone because you pick up your phone, not 90% of the time you're going to go on social media or go on some type of social website to look at those things. Uh, so I say just putting the phone down sometimes and just when you go on social media, just remember you're you. Remember you're a unique person. You're not that person. You're not living that person's life. And it goes back to our first question. A lot of the things that they post are lies. You know, a lot of people, you know, just want you to just want you to press that like button so they can be like, ah, look at me. I've seen it where someone will put up a post and they don't get enough likes. They'll take the post down and put it back up to see if somebody will like it more. So just just rem- just remaining, just remaining yourself and remember that, you know, you're you. Social media doesn't 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 determine who you are. you got real friends that are out there for you and use it for the right platform. Mm. OK, Mark. So the two part question was, how do you keep your peace on social media? And the second part was, how do you decompress from using social media? So uh, same thing with Joe, Uh, put your phone down and how do you keep your peace? So I like that Charles in the beginning, he talked about the advantages of social media because I I got to admit, I I get so frustrated by it sometimes I forget that I actually do have advantages of keeping in touch with family members, especially now I'm on the West Coast, maybe to talk to family on the East Coast. But uh, to keep my peace, I sometimes I just have to get off of it or just use it as a means of saying hey to people and not go into the chat rooms or go into the, <clears throat> the, the things you see about, you know, what Trump said today or what Obama said today or what anybody said today. Just don't, you know, veer away from that because it's like a rabbit hole. Once when you get in there and throw your little piece in there, next thing you know, it's 30 minutes later and you're still going at it. Listen, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> So to keep my peace, I I have to treat it as if I'm going into a lion's den. Mm. I, I stay focused on I'm just trying to get a hold of my son and my daughter. Don't get, <laughs> don't caught, get distracted. Don't, yeah, don't get distracted. Yeah, don't get distracted. <laughs> going to do what you got to do and get out. <laughs> uh, and that and is the so true. The decompress, I actually have to say, other than Sundays. Uh, so I've, I've been on social media, I think, a little too much, maybe two months, maybe two months ago, especially with all the things with politics and i've other than sundays now i think it's for the past two months the only time i've been on facebook is on sundays doing this mm. so i've really had to get away from it because it was just really a waste of time so mm. decompression just putting away from it uh i think somebody said give yourself some time limit i'm not going to spend this much time in it uh 15 minutes a day or whatever the case may be get in and get out and go on with your life Listen, I messed around and used one of those apps that like tell you how much time you're spending. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I could have worked out with that 45 minutes. Like, or I could have, you know, when you think about the time that you're spending, you think it's just a quick little share or a quick little like or a quick little comment but throughout the day. Like some, I mean, it adds up quickly. Um, Felicia, I, I think that would be great also to add. I think if people saw how much time they, and I think people don't know how much time they spend on that because you get in there, you know, I think if people saw a dial next to Facebook or social media and they let yeah. you see how much time you've been on that, I think that would also bring awareness to, okay, I really need to get a life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get a life. I get a dog or something. I don't I know. get a dog or something. Yeah. So I'm interested for mentor's point of view because I know mentor with his 5,000 friends, y'all, you know, he got to keep them engaged. So Talk to us a little bit about um, your pet peeves or just how you decompress, I should say, and how do you keep your peace while using um, social media? To decompress, I was just deactivate. I was deactivate for a few days when I was um, in the hospital, nobody knew. I was deactivated for a few days. We spoke, you know, about mm-hmm. it, but um, yeah, I, I had to deactivate totally. 
the thing about so, uh, social media in general now is, you know, let's say we deactivate Facebook, but we might sneak over to Instagram. <laughs> you got Dove, then you got Dove smash, smash. You got TikTok, you got Twitter. It's just that much decompression that we'll have to do, right? From from all of them. Um, the benefits though from it, listen, for poets, for artists, yeah. uh, one, we promote ourselves, we have shows. At one time I hosted three different poetry spots, you know, and um, creating flyers and, and having my face on the flyer and having people share them for me. And then, you know, one week and one month, I had a hot week where I had a show for each day of the week and I had a flyer for all of them. And I was like, great, man, this is great. I love social media, this is, this is working, you know? Yeah. But one of my major biggest pet peeves is this. You know me, we're friends for many, 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 many years. And you see me in public and you speak to me and it's all good, but you never speak to me on social media, right? Hmm. Until I say something that you would disagree with. Now you do a 360 somersault hmm. off the diving board, right? With no hands, you cuff it. You cuff it right this, you do a spin and you land right on my post to argue and debate Partially, <laughs> how much you disagree with me, mm. and I haven't heard from you in years. You haven't said what's up to me in months. You don't like anything I say or do. Listen, it's nothing for me to drop a post with a hundred likes. I do it on a regular, hundred likes, two hundred likes. I don't put my value in the likes no more. But if the only time I the hear only time I hear from you, from you is if you disagree. Yes, you, you you come shooting out of a cannon somewhere. Yeah. Out of the blue, just to argue with me. But you like, know, there's some people that on. thrive on that, though. There's people that thrive on the opportunity to, like, be combative. It's called trolling. Mm -hmm. trolling. <laughs> trolling. They even have a name for yeah. it, yeah. But just if you see something that you like, let me know sometimes. Let me know every two months. <laughs> <laughs> Not just when you don't, right? Don't just come alive when you don't like it. Yeah, don't, don't, as soon as you see it, all of the, and you will know the people who don't deal with you because they'll start joining together with all of the ones who, who don't like you. They just need to speak up. And then here come the rest. <laughs> I, I guess that's 5,000 you know, follower uh, problems because. <laughs> that's 5,000 follower problems. Yeah, because when I tell you, I won't see me respond to everybody because I can't anymore. I can't respond to all of the comments anymore. <laughs> all right, Charles, and then I'll go to Chris. So for me, um, how I protect my peace is protecting my circle and who I allow in my circle first, you know? And that's why I have a private page. Just because somebody tries to want to accept you, you know, well, just because somebody wants to try to become your friend on that doesn't mean you have to allow them or add them or accept them into your circle. You gotta remember, man, misery is exactly. love's company. You know what I mean? So you gotta understand what a person's ulterior motives are first. Why they wanna be your friend? Who are they? So I do a little research first. Yeah, I'm gonna go see who you affiliate <laughs> Let me with. Google this person first. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I might just check like, how do they know you? You know what I mean? You might not have never seen this person before. Or you might know this person from, you know, just being an associate, but not as a friend. You know what I mean? So what's behind it? Are they just trying to infiltrate your circle to create confusion? And I'm not with confusion. See, for me, social media should just be like they say, for entertainment purposes. Connect with your family for peace. But a lot of times you see a lot of people, and I can understand if you got it for business purposes or promotional use, of course, have your page public. But for me, I need to understand, like, I want to make sure I keep my circle peaceful. So for me, everybody that's in my circle, I really rock with. I really conversate with. I don't have an op I don't have an issue with them having a, a comment or a discussion with me through social media because I know we're gonna all keep it respectful and peaceful. So for me to protect my peace, I gotta really make sure that my circle is tight and I protect that. All right, all and right. I so I like compress, I like the guardrails that you have up at the entry to say, hold on, let me check your license and registration before you even come in this joint. Because you don't just let any and everybody come in a circle, which is great. You can. You see a lot of people too, right? Now they might have like 
uh, two, three, four hundred requests. But that doesn't mean they, you know, accepting everybody in there. They're they doing their research too. Trust me. They trying to see who is this person that's trying to, you know, gain into my circle and trying to see what are they just looking to see what they can see? Are yeah, they right. looking to report back to somebody else? Like, what is it really? You understand? So you gotta you gotta be cautious. Agree. All right. Listen, yeah. just put in the chat. Some people are just nosy as hell. Facts. They just want to see what you got Big going fact. on. They just they just want to check it out. Chris. Okay, so <clears throat> I agree. Um definitely get away. Try to get away, like Joe said, like Mark said, get a life. You know, <laughs> try and try and find a, a vice. You know what I mean? Go to the gym, find other things to do, right? To decompress. Now, as far as peace, for me personally. I don't care if they troll me or not because I'm an old warlord. So <laughs> I will war you and, and, and I will actually enjoy it. Yeah, and, you will. <laughs> and I know exactly how to get under your skin too. I know, I know what to say, you know? So anyway. You're but, saying, first of all, you're saying it with so much precision. Like mm -hmm. it's like he's yeah, waiting for yeah, someone yeah, to come yeah, back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's 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 embedded in the subconsciousness. So it can come out anytime. But I would I would say to someone now to, to keep the peace, my suggestion would be um just pretty much be mature about it, be secure, you know. I mean, don't get too emotional. Um, what they call it, amygdala hijack, you know, don't let the emotions take over your your, your rationality. Um if not. If that if uh, if that fails, now you can't handle it. Just come off and just be a lurker, you know. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> At least you'll be in your lane, right? Yeah, you because you're, 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 yeah, you're just there spectating. Yeah. So I'll admit, I spent <laughs> about six and a half years off social media because it just wasn't a healthy place for me. I wasn't. I didn't like the comparison that I was doing. I didn't like the jealousy I was feeling. Like, I didn't like that that was creeping into me when I saw trips people were taking or when I saw accomplishments people had. Like, it made me feel some kind of way. And I didn't like that I felt like that. So I knew, okay, Alicia, you just need to come off. And I'll be honest, it wasn't until my journeys with 828 that even made me come back on. One of my good friends was like, you have to be social on social media. Now, I took it as his advice, but I don't want to make social media the new slave ship. And what I mean by that is, you know, in corporate, you could do you could hustle a lot for that promotion or that, that chasing the carrot. And it's no different to me in social media when we chase in for these likes and these followers. It's like, you gotta get a certain type of followers to start making money. So now you're just accepting any and everybody to follow you just to get those numbers up. It's ex I say all of that to say that it's exhausting. <laughs> it's so exhausting and it could take away the essence of networking and it could take away the essence of really wanting to engage with people because it's so much of a numbers game. You know, so you're just, absolutely right. I like that. Like you're a like slave. So we'd categorize it. You have the like slave and then you have the likes horse, the ones that, you know, put on anything skimpy. Mm. You know, um, assume various promiscuous positions just so they can get the likes. You understand? So that would be like so you have the like slave for work and they have the likes. And don't, don't get me wrong, like the likes are getting people paid. <laughs> like I can't ignore that fact, right? There's some people out here that are getting paid. And there's also people that are selling out for the likes to get paid, right? And just in my conscious, I, I, I just, I don't like it. I'll be honest, I don't like it. Mark, you look like you want to say something. Oh no no I'm I'm just listening I'm, I'm following what you're saying because I'm thinking about what um Charles said earlier about um you know you don't know why people say what they say on there they they might just be trying to pull you in and uh, you know it was a uh, um, it was one video that was put out and was actually put out by um, a, a white organization but they put it out saying you know black lives matter and I forgot how that went 
but they just put it out there just to get people all stirred up. And I think they, I don't know what, what it was they put up and everybody just jumped right on it like a lion on raw meat. And they, oh yeah, that, that's so wrong, this so wrong. Come to find out the video they posted was a hoax of an officer, I think, brutally raping this black woman in the jail cell. And it was all a hoax. Wow. But people just jumped on it like, oh, they, the officer need to be blah, blah, blah. I'm like, man. So, yeah, so again, back to what you're saying about the likes, you know, uh, what people get paid for likes and uh, not like, or whatever the case may be. So you just never know what their intentions are. So that's why I was shaking my head just right there with you, what you were saying. Yeah, we, uh, haven't, oh. even, we haven't even touched on the fact that people aren't even researching anymore. They're just, like you said earlier, Mark, they're just taking what they learned from someone they're following on social media and that's like all the proof they need um i heard an interesting story just in the last 24 hours and i'm i'm late because i don't watch the news but the, some reporter from one of the major networks um put out a disclaimer that the parents of like parkland and i forgot the other one but they were they were paid actors oh yeah that's old Right, yeah, I know it's old, yeah. but their followers were so, so when he posted that to say that those were fake parents and they were actors and all of that, his followers were so passionate about that being the truth that they harassed the poor parents who already got a deal oh, wow. with kids dying. They harassed them for, for being actors when they weren't. Um, some of them had to move out of their cities and quit their jobs to relocate because they were getting harassed so badly. And when they took the guy to court, he's using the excuse that he was crazy. <laughs> so that's the impact. That is the power that a post has on people who aren't proactively thinking or asking questions or doing research. Like, they're literally just following along blind leading the blind but, uh, but alicia look at the people look at the people who are um debating not to wear a mask look at those people mm -hmm. you know i mean talk about just run with anything you know what i mean but i really think the reason why they don't want to wear the mask is i think they can't stand their own breath that's probably <laughs> the real reason Hey, I think about that. I think about that for real. For real. <laughs> and I know you're serious too. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> All right. So next question, um, probably one of my juiciest ones to ask you guys tonight. How has social media changed how we do relationships? Um, or how do you feel social media is impacting the male-female dynamic in relationships? So I'm going to sit back because I, I, I have plenty to say on this, but I'm curious to know from you all, like how has social media changed the way we date? How does it, how does it change the dynamic between men you and women? You mean dating or you mean um, just relationships or everything? like like romantically dating or just or it could be relationships in general well i think it it it, it has mentally colonized most of us kind of throw off the balance whereas now you're introducing outside influence you know what joe talked about in the first time it hit that outside influence mm -hmm. right so now you're looking now it now becomes a competition and no offense to you females, but you know how competitive you are. And if, you, if you're not sure, just watch Flavor of Love. <laughs> and you get an idea of how competitive you can be. But, you know, you look at, oh, they took them over there. They went for a trip over there. They're doing this. They look happier than us. So, you know, it's like, no, you're dragging the man now to look happy. And, you know what I mean? Sometimes you look in his eyes and... <laughs> <laughs> he's not really happy you know mm -hmm. but i mean stuff like that you know that's that's what can interfere with it so you, you have to be more measured and more balanced and you know that's pretty much more mature with it mm -hmm. okay charles hey chris i agree with you a thousand percent man i believe that right now a lot of people 
um, you see them post these couple goals, couple goals. I remember at one time everybody was posting that Will and Jada was couple goals. Yeah, are they still couple goals to y'all now? Let me know. <laughs> so I think a, a lot of times is the perception, right? Yeah. But the perception is the truth to the eye of the person watching. Social media allows people to create these false narratives that really don't, I call it fake news, you know, because you really don't know what's going on in the person's household unless you're in their household. So for one, I can't, you know, uh, look at someone else's relationship and say, this is the level or this is the example that I want to go off of, you know, unless I know this person in person and I know that I've seen their relationship throughout the years and what they've gone through and how they survived it. And then I can say, yeah, now that's a couple goals that I want because I've seen them go through everything and they still survive. You know what I mean? But other than that, I can't just base it on social media, you know, um, especially with this new day and age, this new era, it's crazy. It's like everybody's entitled. Everybody wants immediate recognition. Everybody wants to be recognized and wants to be liked, right? So mm -hmm. what are guys doing? Now they're coming on social media. They're putting up a front, right? They're wearing all this designer. they throwing money like they got a bag, the cars that might be rented. So girls are going to feel like, oh, okay, he got it. So that's how they're going to approach dudes nowadays. They got their hands out. What can you do for me? You sharing mm -hmm. some of that money? And it's vice versa. Because now you got the women nowadays that's on social media and they just thirst trapping. They showing everything off rip. So if you don't respect your own self and how you portray yourself, how do you expect this man to come at you correctly? Or as a, you know what I mean? Or as a queen, he not gonna, he's not going to approach you that way. He's going to approach you like, what's up? Yeah, I'll take you out. But then what's up right after that? You know what I mean? So it's a different. It's, it's tough because the stripper nowadays are glorified. Facts. Look Rippers are man. glorified. <laughs> and so being, you know, a black. Models. You mean the models? No, I mean the strippers. <laughs> you don't see my fingers. Dancers, models. dancers, right. Chris. Evening dancers. <laughs> Listen, I'm oh like, okay, the but, strippers but. who may have gotten enough likes and followers to transition to modeling, who eventually might even transition to rapping, who knows? But what I'm saying is, <laughs> Like that style of woman has become like the new trophy wife. Like yeah, that's the new, that's the new image. And you see what Charles said that thirst trap thing, that caused problems. Cause when them guys start look on it and start like it, and then I don't know what y'all do if y'all get CSI and go into activity logs and whatever you do, but it caused it caused a problem. Yeah. Because you have guys, I've seen guys that's addicted to it, that to the point where their wives have to ban them and tell them they can't go on because they're just looking at these girls, liking them all the time. And then all of a sudden, you know, it turned to fire. You get yeah. them fire comments. Fire. <laughs> all this stuff. So what chance does a natural down to earth girl who's fully clothed like what chance does she have being on the same platform as a softer porn hub? In percentage, like, in percentage you want it or, or how you want it? On social I media. Mean, one to 10, I mean. Can what, I say so? How you want it measured? <laughs> Go ahead, mentor. <laughs> Was it mentor or Mark? But, but yeah, me. Mentor. For every, um, for every woman, a wife, family oriented, got the husband next door in the picture, got, let's say, two or three kids in the picture, everybody's dressed up. For every picture that's out there like that, that's probably only getting five to ten likes, that's social media failing right before our eyes. For every big booty bent over, half naked or practically naked, Booty picture that receives four or five hundred likes. That's what social media is telling them. That, that, that because it's, it's setting an example for them to shoot for something that okay, I'm craving for this love. I want the same type of love that this particular woman right here is getting 
So maybe I got to show some skin. Maybe I got to bend over. Mm -hmm. Maybe I got to, it, it, it's putting unnecessary pressure, pressure. Mm -hmm. on, on, on people mm -hmm. materialistically. It's the biggest difference. Social media, how it affects relationships, materialistic wise. In the song um, with Jay Z, still a nigga, he said, We on the gram holding money to you on the gram holding money to your ear. That's the disconnect. We don't call that money over here. Oh, yeah. And it's a, you know, I would say a fad of people holding money to their ear on Instagram. Like, not some money. Like, it's probably not even theirs. And if it is, it's all you have. And that's just the point that Jay-Z is saying. Like, we don't call that real money over here on this end. So the pressure that is that is putting on relationships way more materialistically than, than I, I've seen the difference there than any other place because it's a keeping up with the Joneses mindset mm -hmm. that is putting a tremendous amount of people in. Mm -hmm. And I would say this, you can control functions, meaning when you first sign up for it, yeah, you, you get in all of the people that you went to school with. Well, sometimes we haven't seen these people in 15, 20 years. So they may came, come out posting ignorant stuff all day, every day. So now you got to do a process of elimination. You got to clean up your page. Mm -hmm. I've added so many powerful poets and comedians and singers and artists all across the country to where now I have an extremely conscious page. And I'm, I stay very informed and stay very woke from a tremendous amount of woke people in Philly, New York, LA. You know, you, you can dictate the type of people that you bring in, folks that will respect your relationship because they're coming on there and promoting their business or their event and they're getting off. You know, I, I practically had to delete 150 to 200 people that I went to school with because that was on ignorance. Mm. But I added 1,500 to 2,000 movers and shakers and artists mm -hmm. and it created a reality for me that was very woke on social media, extremely woke. Yeah. Like the news travels very fast from a woke poet once they jump, once they jump on social media, if anybody follows my page, they know they stay very informed. Mm -hmm. So I try to feed the people knowledge. I try to feed them spirituality. As you know, I get off of my knees in prayer in the morning. That's the first thing I say before I. And what that do is that sets the tone of positivity that no negativity can come in it. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Who else, Joe? Yeah, I, I definitely I definitely agree with everybody saying. Um, before I go into my what I'm getting, ready, I just want to let all my women out there know, like, uh, some of us love the natural women, man. Some of us don't think it, don't think it's gone. I think you guys are still winning. I tell a chick quick, you know, I you know keep it natural, keep it all the way natural. That's that's the best form of love because I know what I'm waking up next to. I know what you look like when you got your makeup on. I know what you look like when you take that wig off. I know what you look like when you broke a nail. You got crust around your mouth, so don't believe what you what you see on social media. With that being said, I think a lot of women too much, you know, they worry. What goes back to the relationship? They worry about it because hey, why have you even put up a picture of me on social media? Sometimes I don't have to put a picture up of you to show you I love you. The fact that I'm here for you, the fact that I'm doing everything for you, the fact that you're in my life and you're still in my life says a whole lot. Social media is a big front. Um, I got friends talk about relationship. I got some friends that are, you know, that I that that over the years we lost we lost touch because their life revol revolves around social media. You you see it, like you may not say stuff, but you sit back, like uh, uh like mentors say, they may not like your post, you know, but they're but they're but they're on there, you know, they're not supporting you. But the first time you say something they don't disagree with, that now they want to go in and chime in because that's their thing to say, aha. Mm -hmm get people to stop to, to 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 disagree with you and this is supposed to be your friend and like holiday said that you know man i don't have to like a picture you put up i don't have to send you anything on social media you know that you could call me on my phone and we can have a regular conversation and we good yeah social media don't dictate our relationship but i think um so hold on hold on hold on so it doesn't dictate it agreed however 
there is like this I don't I don't know how to explain it but perception there is sometimes if you say nothing about your significant other on social media whether it's a post a picture or anything it can look or seem as if you're single but hold on though, hold on though. That's, that's what it's social media wants that, that, that's what, that's that's what, that's what people hold on social media hold on. want you to think. Yeah, it, it shouldn't mean anything. Yeah, you gotta stay woke. Yeah, I don't have to, I don't have to front that you my woman. When I take you out to dinner, somebody on my social media page is gonna see me, and they're gonna know, oh, this is his woman. You know, yeah. oh damn, she's pretty. I don't have to put that, especially if I'm not putting up pictures of where I'm going, where I'm traveling to. If it's just a hey, how you doing? Like mentors say. I woke up this morning, I prayed. Uh, he, he don't have to put up his woman every day and she should respect that because he, I'm keeping my relationship private. I don't need you guys in my relationship. I don't need you to know where I'm, go where I'm going. I don't, I don't want you to know that I just traveled around the world and I came back. That's yeah. none of your and, it, and you know, it's true because as though I, although I was playing devil's advocate, it is important to keep some aspects of your life protected. That's what I want to say. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> this is what I want to say. Um, because Joe got me fired up here before you got to Charles. Um, mm. if you, I believe if you're married, yes, because I get where Alicia is coming from, and some of these females coming from Joe, they want recognition. It's a form mm. of recognition, right? And it's a form of sealing it up, right? And they love that. But I believe that if you're, if you're married, yeah, definitely post, you understand, your significant other. No, if you just, you're not married, your boyfriend and girlfriend, let me tell you something. Because when you break up, guess what? You, Everybody you got knows. a lot of deleting to do. It's, it's like <laughs> when I go to the gym, right? When I go to the gym, couples in the gym and they're not married, and they all hug up and kiss up and all over. We can know when you're not agreeing. We can know when it's right. still out, right? So now you become a spectacle. So, so I agree with Joe when you say you have to be selective with what you put out there. Agreed. You understand? Yeah. And then, and then, mentor. I just want to touch on something you said real quick too, um, because you were saying when you put out posts, because I will put some some kind of conscious post, and let me tell you something. I might get about ten likes, if that much. You know, or I put a joke out or something like that. I can't even put uh -huh. something around. And that's all I get. But let me put a picture of myself. 100, 200 likes. So uh, social media is superficial. That's pretty much what it is. Unless you, unless you put yourself in a position where you're just doing business or you're doing something else. But I pretty much don't take this thing personally at all. I just laugh. And you know, that is another reason why we have to stop. And women, I'm talking to us for a second. We have to stop glorifying these relationship goals or these couple goals or whatever these you better say that. We want we goals that. are. Let me tell you something. We First of all, that, you know Lisa. anything about what you say, Mentor? I said we want that. We want that. Oh. <laughs> pop up, yeah. as Chris would say. But if we know anything about relationships, we know that when you think about a goal, it's like a finish line, right? It's like somewhere where you get to and it's the end. Relationships aren't like that. Relationships are a continuous journey. There's going to be times when you're up. There's going to be times when you're down. There's going to be times where you feel like deleting his pictures. There's going to be times you feel like promoting his pictures. There is a time and a place to protect that. But social media opens up doors for a lot of discord if you're not careful. But one thing we got to do, and it's hard, it, it is touching. It tugs at the heart a bit when we see those black love photos. I ain't going to lie. I see some of them like, oh, my God, look at this family. Or look how he's loving her. Or, it, it tugs at us. Okay, I'm going to stop posting. I'm going to stop posting <laughs> those pictures. I'm sorry. I will stop doing it. I will hey, let stop. me chime in on that too, Alicia, because I, I want to chime in on what you're saying, because that makes a lot of sense. And Joe. Real quick, I agree with you, but this is the problem, right? Like uh, Alicia was saying, your girl is also on social media. Your girl sees, you might have friends that post their relationship, that post both of them on there. She's seeing that. She has her friends that they post in their relationships and she's seeing that. So what that makes her feel is some type of way like, wow, why is everybody else posting their relationships and their girlfriend or boyfriends 
but you're not posting me. So now they feeling some way and they feeling like, oh, you trying to, you know, it's something behind it, but that's the issue. Social yeah. media has created this division between us where they feel like whatever everybody else is doing, whatever their friends are doing, we got to fall in suit and it shouldn't mm -hmm. be that. Something should be kept sacred. Something should be kept private. I agree. I think we need a, to have the conversation though. Like I feel like when you're in a relationship, you have to define what social media rules will apply because social media is such an important part to people's lives. You can't just go about it and assume that your partner is going to act accordingly to how you want or vice versa. I think the two, male and female, need to sit down and say, okay, what's inappropriate on, on <laughs> social media? What do you want to do or not want to do? Like, do we want to tag? Do we not? And it's a weird conversation, but instead of those lingering kind of like unaddressed feelings and situations, you guys got to take it by the horn to say, here's our relationship and how we want to live. But we're not going to let the outside forces dictate that. Mark, hey, oh, oh yeah, I want to add something. So I'm going to play devil's advocate with you guys. So you remember how uh, growing up, so, okay, uh, speaking from an old man. So uh, back when they said rock and, you know, don't listen to that rock, rock and roll music. It's going to kill your what? brain cells. Mm. When rap came out, don't listen to that rap music. It's going to kill you. Uh, rap music is just going to destroy our black youth. Mm -hmm. we're, we're the generation now that sounded like our parents. Oh, social media is going to be the end of the world. Mm. I'm telling you that social media, this train is on the tracks and it's gone. Mm -hmm. Our generation, our kids is one that's going to grow up and like it or lump it, like it or love it or dislike it. They're the ones that's, that's going to learn how to live with this social media platform. And we, I think we're getting a bad perception of how bad it is because we're looking at, I don't know how many people, uh, or how many things you guys see on social media, but I would, I would almost bet if you measure that towards a, young kids out there who are not that caught up in it, just like with the rap music and the rock and roll, they're learning to live with it. There was one time we went out to a restaurant and you know, me and uh, Cassandra were sitting in there and it was a bunch, just some young couples in there and everybody was on their phone. I'm like, damn. I'm like, this how, but they was good with it. This is the way that they rolling. They, so, they you know, know I, better, yeah, yeah they, this, this is what they're learning, but they're learning to live with it. We're looking at it because of what we came up through and like, oh, social media, you guys going to learn. But this is the way now they're interacting with each other through social media. Uh, I, I, the only thing I would say is that I know that. Oh, they're OK. So the other part of that, we went to a restaurant another time and there was young people there and everybody was talking to each other. You know, it wasn't that many people on the phone. So I don't, I really don't think social media is, is playing that big of a role in the, in the overall relationship of our youth, uh, of us. I think it, it is, it, it, it looked like it's worse than what it really is because of wherever we're seeing it. But I, I would almost guarantee if we compare that to what's really going on, it would be a very small percentage. But again, back to what uh, uh, Charles was saying earlier, if this is what you're seeing the majority on social media, now you got to ask, well, why? What, well, who Instagram? Who am I following on Instagram if this is all I'm seeing? So that is, I just, I, yeah. Yeah, that's a good perspective that I haven't even considered. Um, I know that there's a lot of statistics and numbers around anxiety and depression mm -hmm. and the inability to communicate mm -hmm. because of overuse of social media. And we're going to get into all of that. Um, but it looks like we might need a part two of this social media topic because we are just now skimming the surface. Um, but I do want to be mindful of time. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, I agree. I also want us to eventually get on Will Smith and Jada because uh, y'all are going to respect Will Smith. Y'all going to respect Will Smith. So we're going to talk about that another time. Oh, we got to respect this. Okay. <laughs> I just want to say, uh, so, so, somebody get a casket for Roy Jones Jr. Please play for him. <laughs> He's coming up against uh, what Della Reese said. Uh, uh, somebody said that the quick or how the nice. He said, hey, be careful. You're messing with a heavyweight. <laughs> <laughs> and Ty Tyson going to murder that boy, man. That's all I want to do. Okay. <laughs> we got the after hour discussion open for y'all regarding the, the match here. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, fellas, I thank you again for your time. We're, we're not done with this social media topic though. We don't, we don't dive deeper in it. Cause I'm sure there's more things that yeah, um, yeah. our folks tuning in want to know. So throughout the week, everyone from the chat, let us know like some additional questions you would want to ask the panel around social media. I know I have a few more. Uh, my girlfriend sent me some, so we're not done here. And it's such an intricate part to both mental health and relationships. And as long as we just have this open dialogue on how to better manage the two, I think it'll put us in a better place regardless. Mentor, you got something for us? I love the way this feels. Got chills from looking all over and finding someone real. This once in a lifetime dime has shined through the competition. She's humble with ambition, listens, plus she's a Christian. Never comes up missing in the category of, baby, don't ignore me. One who doesn't play any mind games and flaunts her, her brains instead of her body and more concerned with what she wears at a business dinner than at a party. Now she's hardly the fiesta type. Now I'm in love with whatever she likes, never biting her tongue because naturally her words flow out like poetry, which forces me to openly proclaim my love for her. A sweet, sensual, sophisticated sapphire that I just simply call, oh. And laugh when I slipped and took a fall, see, I was caught by, oh. See, she can't be bought by materialistic things, because she was raised and taught by queens, protected and respected by kings. The woman of my dreams now lives in my reality, and I practically stayed in America for her. Both mentor and Jensen Cox is locked in, breathing her in like oxygen, Exhaling her out like orgasms without her. I'm colder than nitrogen, but with her. I'm hotter than the Maybach Phantom with her. I feel invincible, but without her. I just feel despicable with her. I feel stronger than the NFL, but every day without her, I'm going through hell. And I would say that she's casting a spell on me, but I'm willfully participating in her trance. Together we slow dance the night away. Mentor is what she likes to say, and I enjoy making her forget about any man she had yesterday. I'm in her future, but best of all, I'm in her plans today. When I'm holding her, I feel like I have the whole world in my hands, and I'm I'm crowned a king. But without her, I'm just a man. With her, I think I know how to sing. I know you wanna leave me, but I refuse to let you go. If I have to beg you, please, for your sympathy, I don't mind cause you mean that much to me. Without her, I'm just a squirrel in a doggy dog world. With her, she completes me and teaches me unity and grown folk chemistry. This poem is rated PG and everyone doesn't have to know what's uh, about our relationship. I can still keep it sexy without talking sex. She's healthy, eye candy, mixed with spiritual soul food. It might be time to make a bold move and put a ring on her left hand and then take the lead in our marriage. I was not raised to be a yes man. When she calls me, I refer back to her with, with baby, sweetie, or yes ma'am. It doesn't make me any less of a man. It's just that if I don't do it, she'll get it from the next man. So everything that she's looking for, I wanted to find it in me. Never blinded by other relationships that we see on social media and TV and, and comparing it to what we're doing because see that is a recipe for losing. And I'm choosing happiness over messiness, sweetness over bitterness, chemistry over misery, quality time over playtime, playtime with sons and daughters and no child support and restraining orders. See, I'm sort of weak for her, but she makes me strong at the same time. See, I don't play with her. I just stand in the paint like it's game time, just the mere thought of her. And this poem came to mind. See, I stole her heart, but she's guilty for the same crime. When our souls intertwine, we think with the same mind. See, I don't mind sharing her with the rest of the world. She's the prototype and the perfect example for little girls. With her, my toes curled, and it's a natural reflex. But without her, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm running out of breath. End poem. That's it. <laughs> hey, hey, mentor, mentor. It I'm, wait, I'm, yeah, waiting, I'm waiting to exhale now. Wait, it's an yeah. exhale or orgasm. Wow. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something about that, uh, yeah. Yeah, man. I forgot what part of the <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, but I mean, was... you were listening. I know if anything, Chris is going to catch orgasm part of the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I... I was going to say it, but that's why I'm going to leave it alone. Let that's me, my let me boy. Tell you something. <laughs> it wasn't just me that caught it. I'm just the one that say it. That's right. That's true, Chris. The one that's yeah. Yeah. That's you true. keep it at 100. That's real. That's right. <laughs> Mentor, you never disappoint. Fellas, such a rich dialogue today. Thank you for your transparency, your point of views. You left us with a lot yes. to think about, and I appreciate that. We will reconvene this next Sunday. Charles, thank you for joining us. We loved having you. Thank you for guys for inviting you, me. Charles. I appreciate it every time, hey, man. Thank you, so, hey, man. Awesome Your topics, perspective man. is so refreshing, my man. It's hey, so I refreshing, man. Respect, Charles. Great, great, great job, everybody, man. Everybody, great job. Yeah, good job. Good job. Charles. Charles. Hey, Charles, I know I, I called you light skin last week, but you didn't have to come back with a yellow shirt. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted make to make it, his presence. You, yeah, he wanted to make sure. Make sure they can see me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mess. All right, guys. Have a blessed week for my folks tuning in. Thank you again for hanging with us this evening. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Be safe. Peace.